Hello, hello. Uh, welcome to America's Heroes Group Roundtable live stream digital media show. Uh, September is National Suicide Prevention and Awareness Month. Uh, make sure that you reach out to veterans who are in trouble and uh, make sure that you support them. And also, this is Hispanic Heritage Month. Uh, today is Wednesday, September 4th, 2024. And I am your host, U.S. Army retired colonel and veteran combat medic, Dr. Damon T. Arnold. Uh, today, I have a distinguished panel. Uh, it's Congressman uh, Danny K. Davis, the Honorable Illinois 7th Congressional District Congressman and America's Heroes Group Advisory Board member. And we also have Elfeka McTarty, is a professional uh, macroeconomist, former senior economist, International Monetary Fund. She's also chief economic advisor for the Coalition for a National Infrastructure Bank. Um, I was able to uh, hear the talks uh, that would be given at the uh, DNC, and I'm sure they've done this across the board with different um, groups, but they are um, a, a group that's dedicated to what I think is a genius plan, a genius uh, viewpoint on how to uh, to build our infrastructure. And I'm just amazed at, uh, at the information that I received during that meeting. Uh, so the discussion is that the Illinois 7th Congressional District Congressman Danny Davis, NIB, National Infrastructure Bank uh, Coalition, $5 trillion bank agenda to fund U.S. infrastructure. And uh, Congressman Davis said he'd be running just a few minutes late. He may have some important things to do, like voting on things uh, <laughs> for our country. <laughs> but I'm going to start with Elvika. Why, why don't you give us an overview? And welcome, welcome, welcome to America's Heroes Group. But I was really... Uh, blown away by yourself and the presenters at the uh, who are talking about the NIB and why it's so important for us to be supporting this as uh, people in this country. She is, you know, this is a fantastic, uh, fantastic idea. So why don't you just give us a, uh, an, you know, an overview of what this whole initiative is involving? Great. Thank you very much for having us. Uh, we're really uh, very honored to be with uh, your radio audience today. So uh, as you said, as you pointed out, I am a macroeconomist. Uh, that means I look at the big picture of what's happening with the economy. And I used to work, uh, I worked for 25 years at the International Monetary Fund. Uh, when I retired, I thought maybe it would be a good idea to really apply my skills to seeing if I could help with an American policy that would help the American economy and American workers. Uh, and this really is it. Uh, Congressman Davis has introduced a bill in Congress uh, to create a $5 trillion public bank to lend for infrastructure projects all around the country. Well, why do we need one of those? Because we just cannot adequately finance infrastructure either through the federal budget, the state and local budgets, private capital money. We have money being spent by those different entities, but it's not enough. Uh, I'll show you some examples in just a minute. But the idea is this bank will complement budgets, top up all the financing that we need, invest in our economy, invest in our country, fix our bridges, replace all of the lead water service lines, for example, in Illinois, which has the second largest number in the country, fix our roads, build high-speed rail, build much, much more affordable housing, and really restructure the American workforce so that we have much better paying jobs for families that, that can you know enable them to actually pay their bills. And it's not a new idea. It's been done many times before in our nation's history. The banks aren't around anymore because they their, their charters uh, timed out. But other countries around the world use our model and they call it the American system and they have permanent banks in place to finance their infrastructure. Phenomenal. Yes. You know, and I was wondering, you know, the relationship between this and uh, we had an act that passed and I think it really blew by the media in a very, um, you know, in, in, in a way that wasn't really focused upon as as important a bill as it was in an act. But the um, Inflation Reduction Act, it was August 16th of 2022 when it passed and it was signed in November, uh, you know, 
brought into um, into the um, you know this uh, international uh, agenda in in um, overseas. Um, you know, I'm wondering uh, what um, that has to do with the National Infrastructure Bank. It seems like it makes it even more important that we have something like an NIB right. with the, with that in place. Well, just to go to show you how this evolved over time, mm -hmm. when uh, President Biden first came into office, he, he promoted the Build Back Better plan, which would have done climate change things, would have fixed infrastructure, would have done a whole host of things and put it in to the, you know, at a budget request of $3.5 trillion. Well, when senators thought about this large uh, price tag, they couldn't agree on how they were going to pay for it. Uh, they didn't want to raise taxes. They didn't want a deficit spend. So they made the thing get smaller and smaller and smaller. They broke it into three bills, the Inflation Reduction Act, which is the climate part, the CHIPS bill, which is intended to stimulate, um, you know, um, uh, electronics and manufacturing, that kind of thing. And then the Bipartisan Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, uh, which was really a reauthorization of an in investment spending that the government does reauthorizes every five years. But altogether, all of those things were small. Uh, to, it, when you you see that when you compare our need, which is five trillion dollars, according to the American Society of Civil Engineers, that tracks sixteen of the categories the NIB covers. And also, uh, um, we add on, you know, the other things that the NIB added on, like housing and, and high-speed rail. When you compare that to the Inflation Reduction Act, it's only a tenth of all the money that we need. So the idea is that this would be a big complement to federal spending and also to state and local spending that can't afford to pay for the infrastructure either. Yes, and, you know, one of the things that we're facing now, too, is also the issue, because you brought it up as one of those uh, three arms of the uh, – uh, Inflation Reduction Act was the uh, issue about global warming, and uh, and that is really having a, a tremendous impact on our infrastructure. And we already have an infrastructure that's failing us. Um, I actually was looking at some news reports where uh, some of the uh, signage, actually the poles were falling down in mm -hmm. the city. <laughs> they had been corroded through. And they'd actually passed inspection <laughs> prior to their oh. falling. <laughs> so, and we have the bridges that are failing right now. We're seeing all kinds of infrastructure uh, issues. Right, um, and climate change is making it worse. So we had a big backlog of bridges that needed to be fixed and were not paid for through the uh, IIJA, the Infrastructure Investment Jobs Act. But now we have the climate change impact and it could be anything from extreme heat causing the bridges to buckle or get locked in their place, or you know, even crumble, uh, according to a, a new uh, report that came out in the New York Times just yesterday, uh, saying that a lot of these bridges could die prematurely because of extreme heat, or we have extreme flooding that's uh, eating away at the foundations of the bridge, or we could have things like they weren't made resilient from a, a big super tanker striking them, as happened with the bridge in Baltimore Harbor. Yes. You know, and actually I was speaking to a friend of mine today and it was really interesting conversation, but we were talking about, um, you know, it, it, there were some things where we had some uh, military people who were actually working on systems, but they were younger. So when they started to see transistors, they said, what are those things? <laughs> you know, we had they don't. So there, there's really a, a big need for education, right? Um, yeah. In order yeah. for us to, to be able to engage in this kind of process. So does that, is that part of the plan for the NIB or how, how does Absolutely, that Absolutely, because uh, I, I do a monthly newsletter and I call it the economy and infrastructure roundup because the two things are related to each other. As goes infrastructure, so goes our economy. If we don't invest our, in our infrastructure, our economy grows more slowly. We run into things like big traffic jams or supply chain problems going through ports or whatever. Um, so they, the two are definitely related to each other. And uh, the bottom line is that this infrastructure investment and in jobs, uh, this uh, uh, National Infrastructure Bank Act will provide enough funding to not only fix all of the infrastructure, but actually move the needle on the economy, on the American economy. So it'll create 25 million new great paying jobs, family sustaining wage jobs. We wanna restructure the labor market so that we have 
people moving into these out of low paid service jobs and into these better paying uh, technical jobs to repair our infrastructure uh, will be able to really fundamentally raise GDP growth rates, which will bring in new revenues to government, solve our debt problem. Uh, and we cannot do this, all of this through the budget, which has been the traditional approach of Congress. We really need a side bank, an off budget bank to cover all of these big projects. That's f phenomenal. Yeah. You know, and I was wondering, as, as far as the uh, involvement of the average citizen in this process, you know, what, what should we be doing to make sure that uh, the government listens to this? And then there's a second one that I was going to um, ask you another question is, um, so I'm going to start with that question and then I'm going to ask a second question. <laughs> okay, sure. So our coalition is actually a grassroots campaign. We are low budget, don't get money from anybody. We're all volunteers. And we have looped in to help us a lot of state legislators who know what their infrastructure needs are that are not being met through their budgets and are very uh, attuned to things that need to be fixed and are causing big problems. New York is flooding. Uh, California and New York don't have affordable housing. Um, our uh, uh, energy grid is really uh, running dry uh, because of excess demand, because of excess heat causing, you know, needing more air conditioning because of new data centers. All these things are happening. The need is great. And so this is, is this is an educational program, uh, you know, a, uh, thrust of the coalition, but it is also an opportunity for anybody to have a voice in formulating federal policy. And how that they can do that is they can go to our website, nibcoalition.com. They can sign up to receive uh, the latest news and events that we're hosting. We usually do a, um, a monthly um, Zoom call nationwide. They can uh, approach their members of Congress and ask them to sign on the bill. Tell them about traffic in my area is just terrible. My my plumber, my school teacher can't afford to live here uh, to near their place of work. Uh, we need to have this bill um, and it won't cost the federal government a dime. That's the beauty of it. And uh, we have flyers on the website that you can take to your congressman uh, whenever they have a town hall meeting and you can bring up the subject and ask them to sign on the bill. That, that's phenomenal. Um, you know, and historically, I've, I learned uh, a little bit about the his, history of it. Maybe you can talk about that a little bit. Now, I think this is the fourth time this has been done, but maybe uh, the very first, this. yeah, the very first person who engineered the first bank of the United States was Alexander Hamilton in, in, in conjunction with our first president, George Washington. Uh, they recognized that they needed to build America because we had just won the American Revolution but we were devastated with debt from having fought, you know, the revolution and we had no industrial base at all. We were just a, a, an agricultural economy. So he wanted to use this bank to start our first, to start our industrial revolution and built centers in Patterson, New Jersey to start manufacturing. Uh, it extended through the second generation uh, under Monroe and, um, uh, John Quincy Adams, they built the canal system. That was our first transportation system before we even had roads. Uh, Abraham Lincoln adopted the, the, he wanted to have a third bank, but you know, this niggly civil war came along and he had also a financial crisis. So instead he uh, adopted our first national banking system, uses, employed the same method of uh, getting the bank started <laughs> and built the Transcontinental Railroad. And the fourth iteration was the reconstruction Finance Corporation started by Republican Herbert Hoover, picked up by FDR, used to get us out of the Great Depression, used to build up our military and the finance big projects to win World War II, and lifted us, lifted up the whole economy. The, the afterflow, the afterglow of all that investment was a 20-year period of high growth rate and uh, really a moving of a big segment in, of our population into the middle class on account of this investment in our economy. Yeah, I'm going to paraphrase uh, Albert Einstein. He used to say, you know, uh, doing something uh, that gives you a bad result over and over again, expecting a different result is a bad idea. But it sounds like doing something that's good over and over again, Correct. expecting a good result is probably a good idea. Correct. <laughs> and this would be a big compliment to our federal policy. Uh, there's no other policy that I can think of that will reverse income inequality, will uh, double GDP growth, 
will solve our debt problem by bringing in more revenues. It makes money for government. Uh, and without that, our economy will go backwards and we will decline. And the example of comparison is what the Chinese did with such development banks. They had three of them. They used it to build 27,000 miles of high-speed rail, build new beautiful um, train stations, uh, build a whole water grid across their country. Uh, we're running out of water. <laughs> we don't do something. We won't have food in our grocery stores. Uh, that's how serious it's becoming because the drought is in food growing areas. And we really need to take pay attention to all of that. And there's no money in the budget right now for that. Yeah, that is such an important point. I, I remember with the American Public Health Association, I was, actually gave a presentation with uh, some of my colleagues and it was talking about the water wars, you know, and mm -hmm. how those wars are going on in our southern states right now, uh, Nevada, and, and they're fighting over water because right. uh, uh, it's really a uh, critical issue. Yes. And, uh, and it's really yeah. basic survival. <laughs> we have $400 billion in the bank, the National Infrastructure Bank, dedicated just to water supply in addition to all the rest of the 800 billion for water infrastructure like sewage and, and drinking water. And what our aim is to really and see if we can boost up supplies in uh, in the, the south, the dry southwest. It's a little bit of a break right now. They had rainfall last year, but the Colorado River, is, whole, the whole system is still declining and we could lose power and water to seven states that uh, supply those things to 40 million, um, that one third of all um, residents in the Southwest benefit from that Colorado River system, which is running dry. So that includes homes, schools, hospitals, clinics. <laughs> Everything. I mean, so it's yeah. a public health issue. I mean, uh, at, at heart, uh, yeah. that we have to respond to this. And, uh, you know, one of the things is that um, members also can actually write their congressional members, right? Or contact them saying that this is something that you need to do. <laughs> Correct. Just uh, there's a there's a t um, phone number on the NIB Coalition website where you can uh, email your congressman. The bill number is HR 4052 uh, to distinguish it from other proposals in Congress. Mm -hmm. Uh, and ask them to sign on and, to, and give them real examples in your area of things that you need, like less traffic and more affordable housing, those kinds of things. Yeah, that's that's really uh, critically important, you know, and uh, we just don't pay enough attention to our economy. Um, and people, you know, just don't really pay attention to their finances many times. Um, and I know you're looking at it at a macro economic level, but even at a micro level, people have to realize you need to be involved in this process and know that you're part of the bigger picture too, that Correct. you're actually doing things that uh, can affect your outcome and how things are, are going. Um, but, you know, so the bill HR 4052 is something that people should be, uh, you know, writing into the congressional members about to support this uh, initiative. And I know that uh, Congressman Davis was like the chief sponsor, I think of, of, uh, of the bill itself, but he has a m many, many people who are uh, aligning with him in a congressional level as well, bipartisan, uh, right. knowing that. Well, we, we don't have Republicans yet, but we're actively, actively seeking uh, them. And we've talked um, to at least 150 Republicans about the needs in their district. Everybody, I mean, it, up until now, infrastructure had always been a bipartisan issue. Uh, but the question is, uh, with big budget deficits and sort of fights over what's going to be in the next budget, uh, this has kind of fallen off. The table as far as being, uh, you know, um, part of their, you know, what they're paying attention to. But there's huge scope. Every member of Congress is very attuned to listening to their constituents. If you get enough of them talking to the same member, that's how we were able to bring on all of the 40 members that are that are on co-sponsors of the bill so far. Yeah, and this and, and and one of the things I was thinking about when you were talking about the success that China's had with those three you know, uh, banks, you know, it provided jobs, it yeah. provided training and education because you can't right. get a high speed wheel together if you don't have trained workers. Right. Um, and that's something that we're sort of falling behind in, in the world. So as a, as it's a, it's an issue of national security, it's an mm -hmm. issue of national, uh, solvency, um, yeah. and, uh, you know, our sovereignty as well. And, and there's a big role for veterans to play in this, too. I mean, there are programs around like helmets to hard hats uh, uh, where we want to retrain, you know, veterans uh, in these great paying 
uh, skilled jobs. Um, these are some of them use the latest technologies, new uh, water systems, uh, you know, putting up uh, a new and, and enhancing uh, an electric grid so that it can accept renewable energy coming off of new generation plants. Uh, and also provide it to, to areas that are fast growing or have lots of data centers. These are really on the cusp of things that um, if they if they don't, if we can't keep the lights on, it's going to not be well, it's not going to go well for us. Yes. And, and one of the things you just brought up that was really interesting is that, you know, we also now are talking about infrastructure hardening, you know, making sure that as we're rebuilding, we have the right technology, we have the right skill level, and then we have the right uh, fiscal backing to make sure that it is Correct. implemented correctly. Yes, and uh, so that that's really uh, an important, very important issue. Uh, we actually had someone uh, on uh, last uh, the last show uh, that was uh, from the Department of Labor, and he was talking about veteran jobs and uh, you know the program that they have, and it was really a very very good thing, uh, you know. But I, I can see the intersection of this, and also with the educational system that. We have to realize that we cannot no longer go without training people on mm -hmm. uh, the basic requirements. We have artificial intelligence out here now. We have all kinds of, you know, technologies coming out. And if we we if we're not training our uh, citizens to, to be able to uh, command those jobs, you know, and bring some of those jobs back home, yeah. <laughs> uh, this we need the infrastructure for that. And a lot of this infrastructure is, is quite complicated to develop, especially when you have uh, older cities with very old infrastructure and you have to do a lot of drilling and things like that. If you want to watch a documentary on one of the most beautiful things that I've ever seen was the construction of the Crossrail in uh, London uh, that, that cost $20 billion, but it's like building in a, a jumbo jet in the air while it's flying. It was, it was really quite amazing uh, technology just to roll something out like that. And we want our, be, our workforce to be able to, and our construction companies to be able to do the same. Oh, okay, great. Well, we have about four minutes to go. Uh, what I was going to ask you is to actually give your website again in a way that people can actually tune into what you're doing. I think this is, this is one of the most critical meetings I've ever gone to in the last uh, several years, <laughs> because I, I feel like this is a, it's a, such an issue that is so um, germane to our survival and to making sure that we come out of this the right way. So, uh, so if you can, just give us the... Uh, sure, the as it's the website is nibcoalition.com. You can sign up to receive our information. We have lots of videos explaining how the bank works and how it would specifically uh, promote projects that are needed in specific areas. Um, we have flyers on there, lots of... Um, uh, you know, um, materials that you can use to talk to your congressman about it and learn more about, you know, infrastructure in your area. We really want to expand our uh, pro promotion for this bill and this bank. Uh, so it's, this is kind of like all citizens on deck. This is really something that you can contribute to influencing your national policy to build something that will better, better uh, all Americans and every single jurisdiction. Yes. And then, and by the way, they can get involved with it by getting to your website. I told you, I, I'm all in on this. <laughs> so I'm going to be following uh, what you're doing. We we'll hope to have you back on multiple times in the future. But in the short term, you know, Bill HR 4052 is something that everyone needs to know about. They need to know about the National Infrastructure Bank and what its proposal is to uh, Congress and to write your congressional members. You can write congressional members even if, if they're in your district. I have uh, Republican and uh, Democratic, uh, you know, and, and say, you know, this is something that we need to do. You know, come to the table in a bipartisan way and let's get this done. We, we, we have to save our nation. We're, we're talking about saving democracy now. We need to save our nation's infrastructure. And, uh, and and make sure it's uh, viable for generations to come. And social uh, media. But you know, I'm going to you, you want to uh, drive home. 
Uh, I know Congressman Davis is probably still working on the infrastructure bill in D.C. right now. I, I can't believe he'd be busy right about now with the, all the <laughs> campaigning going on and the presidential campaign. And the upcoming, the next budget this upcoming, which is already going to be a difficult, <laughs> you know, slog again. <laughs> but, yeah, tell us a little bit more. Just, a, you know, a last minute kind of thing about what you think um we should be doing as a nation, you know, and what's your vision? Uh, so my, yeah, my vision is really to uh, make it an even playing field for all Americans. We need to reboost our middle class. We need to help our poor. We need to solve our debt problem. And we could do all of that with this bank, which is big enough to fix everything, invest in our economy, and really help the American worker to be much better off with a great paying job. Well, it sounds like uh, this National Infrastructure Bank Coalition has an incre incredible macroeconomist who is uh, leading <laughs> that discussion. And I am so happy because uh, when, I, when I was talking to them, they said she must come on <laughs> so, <laughs> for, for the uh, show. But we will have you back on again with Congressman Davis. I know he is, uh, he's always very busy doing things for the community and for the nation. So and as you are. So uh, thank you very, very, very much for securing our nation and making sure veterans have a future and their families. Um, thank you for having me. Okay.